phantoms, poltergeists and murder await the most haunted team in North Wales. <laughs> With records dating back to 1461, the castle behind me is said to be home to many a strange paranormal happening. With human bones found behind a wall and civil war, it's no wonder that phantoms roam here in abundance. With dark shapes, strange smells and full apparitions, they've all made their home here at Bodlewithing Castle. Lying a few short miles inland from the northern Welsh coastline, this impressive building dates back nearly 550 years. It remained a family home until just before the First World War, when it served as a training camp and then a recuperation hospital. Converted into a girls' school in 1920, the castle is now a regional base for the National Portrait Gallery and a public home to many fine works of art. The amazing thing about this house is that there is no terror, torment, death, murder and suicide, and yet it's haunted. And there are various ghosts here, but we really don't know who they are. And that's, for me, very interesting, because the idea, of course, of us being here is to actually find out who they are. Along this ornate corridor, a dark, shadowy figure has been seen floating down its full length. Also, disembodied legs have been witnessed walking along here, along with strange noises and the feeling of being watched. My own experience really dates from about two or three years ago uh, when I saw um, a gray figure uh, going past a, um, an entrance in one of the main corridors here. It was quite an interesting experience because it was something like uh, quarter past nine in the morning. I was walking into to work, uh, talked to one of the staff, but saw this figure uh, going past an entranceway. Thinking it was an intruder, I followed, but there was nobody there, and um, did a thorough search, but all the doors were locked, and it was quite obvious that there was nobody there. In the dead of night, when the castle is closed, the sounds of heavy footsteps can be heard coming from the cellar. From 1915, uh, this place was not only an officer's mess, uh, for Canadian soldiers, but also a hospital and training centre. In fact, to this day, at the back of the castle, there are trenches that were used for the purpose of training soldiers. So it's, it's quite uh, amazing to think that soldiers in this wonderful, tranquil surroundings were actually trained for the horrors of Passchendaele, the Somme. What memories they've left behind here, nobody knows. Going back to the First World War, the director we had then before, Kevin Mason, his wife came to visit him one afternoon in his office, which is across the way from the castle here. And what she saw were three gentlemen in army uniform just standing behind him. And he had no idea at all that the, his wife saw them. And she, and she said to him, do you realize you've got three gentlemen standing behind you? And you know, they, they, they just went. It's said that behind this wall above me are the bones of a very tall man that were found during refurbishment. Nobody knows who he was or how he died. Did he die of natural causes or was he murdered? And is he one of the ghosts that's seen wandering around the empty halls and corridors of Bottlewithing Castle? We have 24 hours to find out. The size and splendor of our new surroundings has already left a favorable impression of the most haunted crew. But does parapsychologist Kieran O'Keefe feel that this may hinder our investigation? Well, here we are at Botherwithing Castle. It's an absolutely beautiful place. It's very, very big. So how do you think we're going to cope tonight? Because I think a lot of us are going to get lost. Yeah, I think that's the first thing. At night time, the lights are going to be off. Yeah, we are going to get lost. It's very big. Also, I've noticed walking around, there are a lot of statues and a lot of portraits. And that may be a bit unnerving this sense of presence, this idea that eyes are following us or, you know, something's looking at us, I think it's going to add to the fear and anxiety this evening. Are you going to be using the thermal imaging camera? 
Yeah, definitely. It's it's the ideal sort of equipment to be looking for and verifying any cold spots within the room, but also instantly recording whether the temperature of somebody goes down. Mm. So they'll subjectively report, oh, I feel a bit colder. With the thermal imager, we can discount suggestion and we can actually see if the temperature is genuinely decreasing. Do you foresee any difficulties tonight? It might be difficult to research any names or any information that actually comes out uh, either from the medium or from the seance or any other sort of situation. Simply because we don't have access to the names of the spirits, the names of uh, the ghosts that are attributed to some of the phenomena that's occurred here. Spiritualist medium Derek Acora and guest psychic David Wells have been invited to join us in North Wales, arriving separately and with no previous knowledge of this ancient home. But which ghostly characters will choose to make their presence known as we investigate Bottle Within Castle? Just as we've entered this atmosphere, what I wanted to do, I was going to turn you around and say to you, it's shown itself again, this is the second what? time. There was a, a big, very tall dog there, long shaggy hair, and just like, come to the back of you, and just looked up at you like that. Oh, God. Honestly. And now, again, his energy's disappeared, but he was right at the back of you. I, I, I heard the noises coming up, and I knew it wasn't footsteps. I looked, and there he was. What sort of dog would you say it was? To me, he's like one of those uh, Irish... Um, Wolfhound. Wolfhounds, oh, big right. fella. Yeah. Not heavy set, but very yeah, tall. Yeah. And kindred eyes. Yeah. Kindred eyes. Oh. Now I feel that that dog, okay, he's not in visitation. I feel he's he's active here. So he padded around the whole building. Yes. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. What about this area here? Well, I, you know, here I'm also be. Oh. What? Who? Yeah. There's a gentleman here, a real gentleman whose energies he's trying to make the link with me. Bless him. Who are you? Who are you? He's a kindred soul. He doesn't feel negative at all. Rather proud of my place. Rather proud of my place, I keep on hearing. Mm. Sir John. Sir John. Is he, uh, is, is he permanent here, Sam? No, he's in visitation. Okay. There's a, a, a gentleman, a Sir John, who comes here often. Who is, in who visitation. is he? What's his surname or a date or just ask Sam to give us some more Can you give me a bit more? A bit more, please. 1829, 1830. 1829, 1830. Bless you. That's when he was here. Uh, That's what Sam's just right. given me now. Um, go on. Since he's been in spirit, he, he knew of this but he didn't know who, but now he knows the answers to the mystery. What's that? What's the mystery? He found out the, um, who did this and who hid the body, put the body behind the wall, the fireplace. Right. So he, he, during the time, the date that you gave me, that's when he was here and he knew uh, and the bones were already there. That's, I, I feel that's what Sam's just given me that right. now, yeah. Okay. Um, and he knows now who um, this is connected to. Right, okay. Derek's reference to these mysterious remains appears to relate to the discovery of human bones during restoration work in 1829, as chronicled in the diary of the then owner, Sir John Hay Williams. We decided to move up to the first floor, but as we reached the foot of the stairs, Derek immediately sensed another spiritual energy. There was a young girl that lost her life here as well. A young girl. Right. She walks around. She was what? There's the upper levels. She's up the upper levels. Right. Up that way. And I feel that she was here because now I'm getting a group. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing from the residual Andy a lot of laughter, um, a lot of girls, a lot of girls all over. And it seems as if this one particular 
um, sweet soul. Um, how, Sam? Tell me. <coughs> she what? Thank you. She did not. She was not murdered, but her life was shortened. There was an accident, an accident that had happened to this young girl, okay. um, linked with um, something happened coming from. Thank you. Thank you. From a classroom, something to do with stairs. So she fell. I feel this is a fall, an accident, um, and here, the damage. Because she broke her neck. I feel that must have happened that way over here. Okay. Um, How old did you say? Between, I'd say between, I might be slightly out here, between 10 and 12. And the date that this would have happened? Go on, Sam, could you give me that again? 19. Give me 19. It looks like 1920 or 19. Something like that. Mm. Suzanne. Susanna. 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 Can you give me a surname, please? It looks like Parker. 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 Give it to me clearly. It's either Parker or Parkin. Okay. So Susanna, Susanna Parkin or Parks. Or Parks. Or Parks, Park. even, okay? Oh, Parks. I'm just, you know, I'm okay. just relying on to give right. me that there. Um, most definitely an initials SP. Okay. Okay? Right. Although unable to directly connect the building with the name that Derek had given, we did appear to be discovering more about the rich tapestry that lies behind this castle. But who else haunts Bottle Within, and how welcome would we be made? Right, I'm doing no more. No, sir. Stuart. No. Stuart, mate. Uh, no. Stuart, please just come back two seconds, because I want to ask. I'm not going to see you. investigation in North Wales had already revealed two human energies from Bottle Within's eclectic past. But would the sculpture gallery offer Derek any further clues as we attempt to unravel one of the castle's most gruesome mysteries? Sir John is one of the spirit people. Obviously, it's not just him. I feel there's um, a mixture of everything here that seems to be, but it's like as if there's a number of them congregate, and I feel around this area, congregate at times and discuss um, things of um, in their time. The only way I can describe it mentally, they just show me, I don't know why, this mm -hmm. will sound silly, mm -hmm. but I see a door, yeah. and the spirit people are pushing that door like that and then walking through, and yet the next minute they're getting confused What's happened to the door? What's happened to the door? I, I don't know what the meaning with this. It's something about a door. So it's something that's been blocked up? It, it's got to be. It's got to be something... In this room, do you think? I feel it's on this level. Right. And, um... <gasps> thank you, Sam. A different way in. A different way in that the spirit people are used to coming in. And it's been changed round. I will. Yes. It was a woman. Thank you. The, a woman has lost her life here. She was murdered. She was placed uh, behind a wall. The bones, the bones linked with the wall. Mm -hmm. The bones linked with the wall. Her life was taken from her. But you see... Who took her life? You know, can I just tell you, Evie? Mm. The um, people who were here in, in 1649, 1650, mm -hmm. um, the lady was part of that group of known family. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel she was, the way Sam's given it to me, she was taken because she was found to be um, not faithful to her beloved. 
and um, I feel her life was taken. And she was, it was like as if she was just placed behind this wall. Okay. And, and, you know, but she was already dead. And then it's like something bricked up. Right. And at a later date, this was found. Mm -hmm. And a, a partner in life, uh, in a fit of rage, anger, found her to be unfaithful. And um, I know what I get now with the feelings, okay, is I've got a blow to my head and I also get this strangulation. Um, so whether she was rendered unconscious and then he did what he did, putting her behind, but I just have this tendency to feel that she was, um, her life was taken before she was bricked up. Is she walks this place very, very unhappy. Okay. She causes a lot of activity here, seemingly activity, mm -hmm. you know, like sounds and things, because she's discontent even to this day. Okay. The unfortunate loss of vital documents in a fire 80 years ago means that much of the castle's early history is now hard to substantiate. But it would appear that Bottle Within may have one or two secrets that it wishes to remain unheard. And with our cameras switched to night vision, guest psychic David Wells gave us another chilling omen of what may lie ahead. I'm getting a dragging. The image I'm getting is of someone dragging a corpse. Oh. Dragging a corpse along the floor and it's trailing blood. That, that's the image I'm getting. There is, a, there is an, an angry entity here, and I can't... It, it's almost like he's... He is... He's not quite what you say in Scotland, you know, he's not the full shilling. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but he's not all there. Is he... Do you say he's the person that's been murdered or the murderer? Murderer. This is the murderer. Do you know how he murdered this person? Did you...? Beat him to death. Be beat him? Yeah, beat okay. him to death. It's almost like I'm completely godless as well as the words that they're giving me. Completely godless. Despite being a congenial family home for several centuries, Bottle Within Castle appears to still harbour a few forlorn and disgruntled spirits. However, we were all still keen to begin the night vigils, with David joining Kieran, John, Tom and myself in the staircase hall. I'll tell you what, this is fantastic, isn't it? It's very rare. It's, it's very rare that oh, we, um, the places we go to um, are so, so very quiet and so dark as well. I mean, so completely stark. What was that? I heard then what I thought was the sound of almost like somebody dropping a torch on yeah. the floor out back in that corridor. Yeah, they're very close. It, it would seem very close, didn't it? Yeah. Are there any spirit people here in this place with us now? Can you try and give us a sign? Can you make a noise? Please come forward. We don't mean you any harm. Did you hear that? Yeah. Please come forward. Is there somebody in there? Is there somebody in there? In that room. What? Well, did it not sound like somebody? Yeah, but I can't, I can't tell if it's at the end of the corridor in the room or off to the right. You know, the way yeah, we right came. With everyone else confined to our crew room on the opposite side of the castle, we were all a little baffled by the origin of these nearby sounds. We decided to move back down a floor and into the same cellar where David had recently sensed an outcast, a murderous soul. Is there any spirit person down here in the cellars? If there is, please could you give us a sign to let us know that you can hear us and see us? Can you come forward? 
Please, please try and talk to us. Did you hear that? Yeah. Please try and talk to us. That sounded very distinct. Yeah. Still there? What's wrong? The, uh, the beeping that you can hear at 10 second intervals is the EMF meter recording. Yeah. Just, it's just going to record for five minutes and then stop. And that's what that beeping is. But the sounds we heard, footsteps, was different to that, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 It's a tracking. Where is it coming from, Tom? I think it sounds regular to me. Yeah, it sounds to me like it's some sort of time. Is it that me? Somebody blowing in the microphone. It does. It just sounds to me like someone's going. <sighs> there. Definite dragging sound. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello? Hello? If you're in this room with us, could you make a noise? Let us know you're here. Maybe we can help you. There's a crook. There's a footstep or a door. Make a bigger noise so it leaves us in no doubt and I'll be able to help you. I need to know you're here. Sounded like something touched the door, something pushed the door. It you did. Yeah, it did. Just something touched the door. Touched the door, I'd say it wasn't a push. Yeah. Had nightfall signalled a change in the serenity of our surroundings? What presence hid behind the cellar door? And what other tricks would the night hold for the most haunted team? No, you did, no, you I did, didn't. you did. I didn't I heard it, honestly. Oh my god! <laughs> Fortress in name, Bottle Within Castle has so far been kind to its latest occupants. However, all five group members have verified that a succession of sounds, possibly a dragging noise, could be heard from directly outside the cellar door. We did check outside, but to no avail, and with none of the other crew members taking responsibility, the question of what had been on the other side of this door would remain unanswered. David Wells felt that someone was ready to make contact on this investigation, and he decides to hold a seance in the sculpture gallery. If there's anybody in this room, please make yourself known to us. But would the eyes that staff and visitors often Noise. feel watch them actually be able to provide us with Watch a clearer them. message? Are you connected to someone round this table, Frederick? After just a few minutes, we began to receive a response. However, none of us were prepared for the events that would follow. Over the course of 30 minutes, personal messages started to come through to the table via David. 
Initially, these messages were directly for Carl, and then even more bizarrely, for me. This occurrence took us all by surprise. It had never happened to any of the crew before, and I in particular found all of this a little weird and very emotional. But what was extremely interesting was the evidence detected by Kieran's thermal imaging camera. Give Yvette a sign of when you're near her so she knows you're there. Touch her or sense a feeling. As the glass moved towards me, I felt a breeze brush across my hand. Oh, God. Go. 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 Whereabouts now? All around my hand. This thermal image photo, taken at exactly the same time, may offer further proof of the aura that I had just sensed. In stark contrast to the red glow around the hands of everyone else, my hand is clearly blue in colour. Surprised, intrigued, but also perplexed by what we had all just seen, we decide to take a short break to recover our composure. It hadn't escaped our attention that so far, we had only encountered audio responses to our appeals for activity. Yet Bottle Within had promised us more than bumps and bangs. If we were to capture something more, then we would need to cover all four floors. With guest psychic David Wells leading a group upstairs, Carl, Richard and Stuart head for the cellar. Whilst Rachel, Alex and Most Haunted's newest team member Joe help to hold my hand as we explore the ground floor. I just don't get, I just don't get the feeling in this room at all that anything is going to happen. I really don't. I just can't. There's no feeling of... It just feels nice. It feels like mm. we're in a nice room. Yeah. Especially compared to the other rooms in the, in the building. Yeah. It's a nice... Ooh. Nice. What? <laughs> I felt like something just tickled the top of my head. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. You all right? Yeah. Nice to Yeah, fine. Oh, Just to let you know, I'm holding Carl's hand. <laughs> 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 this, is, this is not what it seems. Okay? Yeah. We'll love us. Yeah. So where should we go first? Do we stay here or should we go further on? Don't mind. I think we should go to the farthest extreme first. Do you and yeah. then work our way back? Yeah. Yeah, that well, sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Superb. What was that? Is that you, Stu? No. Oh, come on, it was. No. What? That Is wasn't me. Everyone stop. Everyone stop where they are. What was that? What was that? No. Nope. Was that it? No. Nope. It was. It was definitely plastic. There was something moving. Yeah. It was. It was plastic. No doubt. It was not. Wasn't that? Right, shall we find a position now then, somewhere where we can... Perhaps we stay here then. If we can kneel oh, down, sit down, or get something to sit down on, Jeez. so we're comfortable. Guys. And yeah. then we can conduct... Table. Table, tilt. Tilt? tilt my table. That's a nice one, isn't it? I feel immediately sick. Do you? Immediately want to be actually physically, almost physically sick. Almost wanted to vomit. Cold Why is that? Just the presence of, or just yeah. a general sort of No, this is very feeling. strong. Very strong energy made me want to... <laughs> literally. Almost. I had to find it back there. Is there anyone from any families that used to inhabit this place? Anyone who lived here that for whatever reason still lingers, still stays here? Well, so far nothing. I've um, been into the library room again and it all seems incredibly quiet. Um, but then it is only early yet, so... slightly disappointing. But David, you definitely feel negative. Just... Yeah, I feel... I felt the nausea's gone, but when I first walked in, it was extremely strong. One of the strongest feelings of nausea that I've ever had in the places we've been. There's, a, there's also, like, a laughter in there, but it's not a nice laughter. It's laughing at rather than with, you know? Mm. 
Is anyone here? Could you just move something, make a noise? Let us know you're here. Is it moving? Well, it is moving. I ain't doing it. I'm, I'm, I think I'm it's an hour off. If you are there, if you are there, I ask you to continue to move the table. And the first question I will ask, is there someone here who wants to make contact with us now? You are there, there is someone here, and you're not, no, I'm not moving. I'm not moving no. at all. I'm not moving at all. Is it still moving now? Are you there? Is it, yeah, you are there. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to swear at you. I don't know if I just heard loud. Yeah. John Williams, is it you, John Williams? Are you making contact with us now? John oh, Hay Williams, are you here? Sorry. I know I heard something. There was a noise over there. There was a noise that yeah. came from that corner. Yeah. Who was that? Who was that? Who was that? Who was John that? Hay Williams. John Hay Williams. Rebuilder of the house in 1830. Are you here? Oh, God. John, John, thank you for talking to us. Um, you sound really excited. Um, we're excited at you being here. Um, you're proud of this house, aren't you, John? You love the house. And you still love it. Can I ask you... Tears coming down my tree tree. You know. <coughs> oh yes, this this you don't know how emotional I get with this. It, 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 I, You're right. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm abs I'm not frightened. I, we're not frightened of you, John. Uh, and I'm sure you you don't want us to be. Hello, can anybody hear me? Hang on, John, one minute. Don't go away. Sorry, Richard. No, it's right, mate. Yeah, don't go away, yeah, John. Um, are you making loads of noise, like lots of talking? Um, we are down in the cellar, um, but we are talking at a very, very... I mean, if you can hear me now, oh, boys, um, then you can... You, that sounds... But this is the level I'm big talking down here. We've just heard, like, lots of women, or a woman, or women just talking, chatting very, very loudly. Just wondered if you'd heard it. No, but what we have got is um, some extreme movement on uh, a table down here. We're doing some table tilting from John and which has got very, very emotional. Nothing up here so far, apart from the women's voices. I think we're going to go and check it out. Right out loud. What? Hello, jo John, are you... What was that? John, are you with us? There's a lot happening. We're just seeing shadows down there. John. Something moved over there. Something Holy there. John. Are you with us, John? John, is there another way of you... Are you with us now in this room? If you're a spirit in this room and you can hear me, please... Please try hard for us. What is that noise? I don't know. It's a bang. It could be that door. I think it is. Should we go towards the door? If there's anybody here in this room, please, can you try and open this door? Move the table and let us know. Are you making the noises in the back of the room? Show yourself. Show yourself now. If you are here, show yourself. If you wish to inflict harm upon us, well, please do so. Yes. Now, John, you don't want to do that. We don't. You don't want to make... No, you don't want to make harm with us. You just continue. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. You're wonderful. Uh, now, can really, can you actually make it move now? Keep it going. Keep keep the energy going, John. And make a supreme effort using our energy and actually move the table slightly Jeez. in the room. Keep going. Don't let it stop. Please, John. Carl, really Richard and Stuart seem to have made you contact really with John Hay Williams. Job. Bizarrely, three floors above this scene, David was also sensing this former landowner. I've got the man here, John. He's trying to tell us to get off the floor. He's quite flustered that we're sitting on the floor. Oh. He's quite sort of concerned that we're sitting on the floor. And he's like, get off the floor, get off the floor. So can you tell why? Because guests shouldn't sit on the floor. He sees us oh. as guests. Are you still with us? John, have we frightened you off? 
John, are you no longer here? Are you no longer with us? You've gone. Is there anyone else here? John, has somebody else scared you off? Is there someone else here? I'm getting the name William, or William with him as well. Which is John William, or John Williams, or another oh, person? Oh, William could be another person. Approaching the end of our investigation in North Wales, the Most Haunted team had split up into three separate groups, each monitoring their own floor of Bodlewithing Castle. With David's group upstairs and Carl's in the cellar, Rachel, Alex, Joe and myself had tentatively reached the exquisite but equally eerie surroundings of the Sculpture Gallery. OK, I think it's just the draft. Is it this door? No, it's not. Boys, listen. What's that? Can you touch it? It's that door. Yeah, it's that door. Yeah. It's like, as, um, as far as I'm aware, it's, it's just a staircase, I think. Yeah, it's a draft. Mm. Can't open it. You did, no, you I did, didn't. you did. I didn't. I heard it, honestly. I heard it. Oh that my. Oh. Well, right. 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 I heard it as well, but I. Tell me what you heard, tell me what you heard. What? I thought you went. Yeah, no, it wasn't. You stood next to me. No. And then you screamed, but I thought you went. Because your heart no. went safe. Oh. I didn't actually. Might oh my. They might have heard us. Oh my. That was so loud. It was us screaming. Oh, was that you lot screaming? Um, well, we just we just screamed because we heard something. Um, Deep but, breath. But it, but it was us. It was us screaming. Okay, fine. Let's let's just. Just oh, take some deep breaths, guys. Let's get yeah. let's get back in there because this is yeah, just deep breath. Come on, come on, deep breath. I keep getting this, and I get it a lot now. And it, but it was really. I'm not going mad. Because I know, because you heard because it. Because you thought it was, I thought it was a bear. God, it was so sad. I thought it was something, there. Was, there. something there. was there. By me. That was that really was scary. scary. I thought we were all going to fall through the window, but to be honest know, with if, you. If you hadn't have heard that, Rach, everybody would have thought, oh, that's just hearing things again. No, I heard but it. I'm so pleased you did. No, I did. Because I, I, and it was good because I asked you to tell me what you heard yeah, and you before described you it. Yeah. Mm. But it, because what I thought was you went to go, ah, I've just seen something. Mm. And when you all screamed, when I was sort of stood there going, oh. what? I didn't, I, I actually thought it was you. I didn't think it was. Did you die in the cellar down here where we are? You did die down here. Did you die in the part of the cellar that we're in now? <sighs> right, that was well, nice. you did die down here. You died down here where we are now. What are you going up for? Well, just just because me, <laughs> just because me. My <laughs> legs are hurting, mate. That's what I'm ready for. No, I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> please, please stay with us. Don't leave us. Please don't leave us. We want to help you. <laughs> right, that was loud. You did die. <laughs> right, that was loud. Please, can you do again what you did before? Please, can you make a noise? Please, can you touch one of us? Please, can you show us a sign that you're in this room with us? Please, please, can you do what you did before? We know that you're in this room with us. We know you're here with us. Please, can you show us a sign that you're here? So, did you hear it then? But not, but fainter. In the other, in that room. Well, just there. Oh. 
No, it's Dawes really going for it now. I ask you to leave this place and go to the light wherever you should go, whatever happy place you should go to, you are allowed to go, I promise you. Godspeed. Please go. And we say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> See, what the I've got hold of it. Right, I'm doing no more. That's it. Stuart, no. Stuart, mate. Can't, no. Stuart, please just come back two seconds because I want to ask. I'm not going near that table anymore now. How are you feeling, Richard? Frightened to death. Frightened to death. Um, I've never experienced anything like it in my life. I've got a cross around me. I only started wearing this after. I'm not a religious person, you know that, don't you? I just have this cross around my neck since. Uh, at uh, Craigie Noss place. Cool. Uh, I can't believe it. I... I... <laughs> I'm quite, I, I have to admit, Stuart, I, I'm, I'm almost speechless. I, what's just happened here is it, it, phenomenal. I, I, I know I've said it earlier, and I don't I'm just repeat myself, but I'm always very sceptical about Ouija boards and, and table tilting and, uh, and, and all that, but... I can honestly, honestly say that not only did, when things happened, that it felt very cold first. Um, I know for a fact, and you know, no disrespect to, to Richard, I watched Richard's fingers. They were they were right off the table. At one point, we had about three or four seconds of this table moving on its own. Yeah, there was nobody there. And it's not a light table. It's quite a, it's quite a heavy table, and for it to move like it just did, I mean. <laughs> I kind of want to have a look and see if there's any fishing wire underneath it because it moved too well. And this is a this is a table. I mean, if you look underneath it, I mean, one, it's good to get a shot underneath the table to make sure, to show there's nothing <coughs> there's nothing attached to it. But this there's no casters on it. This is a this is a hard metal table, and for it to slide across this floor. We noticed how much warmer it's got. Yeah. Our night at Bottle Within Castle had certainly been eventful, from the mysterious sounds heard on the very first vigil to this violent and terrifying climax. <laughs> Much of the activity <laughs> manifest in the cellar. Although our locked off camera failed to capture the shadowy shapes that both Carl and Stuart witnessed, we did later discover this unusual light anomaly in this same room. With so little known about the exact identity of the spirit said to roam here, it is difficult to say what force or motivation lay behind the chilling phenomena that we encountered throughout the night. We could only surmise that if a presence was making itself felt, it may not have welcomed our stay at this historic location. Well, that's the end of one of the most fantastic evenings I've ever had. Carl, me, Stuart, there we were, in the cellar, didn't think there was going to be a lot there. But the amazing thing is that David had already come up with this bloke dragging something in the cellar. Now, this was not recorded in any way. No one had heard anything about it. We went down into the cellar just for nothing more than a, an ordinary vigil. And, of course, guess what we saw down there? A table. So, a bit of table tilting. Well... I don't know, it was absolutely fantastic. We really did get some incredible results. Can you actually make it move now? Keep it going. Keep keep the energy going, John. And the table the was... Effort, I suppose you can, the only way I can describe it is thrown at me. <laughs> it hit my foot. I squealed like a girl. Oh, boy. It, it was excellent. For me, fantastic night. Um, I'm still talking about it, and I'll go on talking about it for a long, long time. In Bottlewithan Castle, the main focus of the phenomena was actually in the basement. Two separate groups experienced phenomena. One group actually experienced auditory phenomena, and they all independently heard what could only be described as a scratching sound or some sort of footsteps right outside the basement. A second group had a lot of very compelling and very intense experiences. You sound really excited. Um, we're excited that you're being here. Um, My own theories on table tilting are to do with 
unconscious fraud. However, this particular footage shows the table moving a distance of about two feet, and certainly unconscious fraud would not explain this. Now, all of this is on film. In an ideal world, uh, we'd have a lot more cameras filming that. So I'd like to examine the tape a lot more uh, before I then say it's a paranormal occurrence. A beloved family home, a seat of learning, and now a haven for fine art. But just how many bitter memories lie within the walls of Bottle Within Castle? Until next time, sleep tight.